Anton Scoro, five grappling here with Gary fucking Tonin. I don't even know what else to say other than that, brother. Uh, hell of a performance today. You've literally been killing the mats all day long. Um, talk to me a little bit about what it feels like to be at this point at ADCC and uh, what's ahead for tomorrow. Okay, so first of all, I have ADHD, so there's just no way I can get through this interview without talking about that chain beforehand. <laughs> That's the most amazing thing I ever saw. I love it. It's beautiful. It's fucking interesting. Woof. Bling, th bling, there, bling. there we go. Hey, yeah, where the fuck is the hat? We can exchange some fucking items <laughs> here. <laughs> the, last, the last match, I was like, you know what? I, I want to kill this guy. I was like, I, I, the only reason I brought the robe out is because it's cold in here. But uh, I was like, I'm dropping the hat and dropping the whole thing. I, I'm just going to go out there and kill. So that's what I did. Man, hey, so let's talk. That last match was amazing. I, I think the match of the day for sure. Uh, dude, where the fuck do you get these scrambling skills? Hey man, uh, this is just what I do uh, on the mats every day. Um, you know, it's funny, I, they call me the lion killer, but uh, in the gym I have a completely different nickname. I don't, I'm not so sure if I really wanna, wanna get it out there to you guys, but I'll, I'll let it slip here. Uh, so they call me at the gym the slippery salmon. I think it's far more fitting than the lion killer, uh, but it's not as impressive of a nickname <laughs> when you announce it in front of fans, so yeah. Hey, so I want to talk a little bit about what's left with, uh, with this tournament for you because you guys are in a stacked division. Uh, obviously, some seriously great competition left for you tomorrow. Uh, which matchup out of the last two are you most uh, looking forward to? Um, so, which, wait, so which one was I looking forward to today? Tomorrow. Or tomorrow, tomorrow. Um, yeah, so I mean, I'm really excited to fight JT. Um, you know, regardless, obviously I'm gonna have somebody else in the finals if I beat him, but that's the most important match to me because that's, a, that's something that I gotta get back. Like I'm one and one with Canuto now, but I'm two and oh, or sorry, oh and two against uh, JT. You know, uh, I have two decision losses to him, you know, which is really, it's a bitter thing to feel a decision loss because it's like you don't really feel like you lose, but you did. You know what I mean? It was neck and neck, and like they just give you this, they give the other guy the decision. Thankfully, I was on the receiving end of the win with a decision today, but it doesn't sit well with me to have those two decision losses to JT. So I'm really going to try to bring it tomorrow and make sure that uh, you know points are on the board and that there's just no question that I'm the better grappler. So that was one thing I was going to talk to you about because with JT, we all know he's the reigning defending champ. Sure. Uh, he's got a big target on his head. Do you go in there and, and look to outpoint him or do you go in there and look to just bring the pace, submit him and put the stamp on the freaking on the map and say, I beat him? A little bit of both. My number one priority is to submit people. But you, anytime you go into a competitive scenario, I don't care what you're doing. I don't care if it's competitive fire juggling. I don't care if it's competitive jujitsu or MMA, whatever the case may be. One of the most important things to do is to identify how you can win. Okay, how do I actually win this competition? All right, and one of the ways is with points, and one of the ways is with submitting people, okay? So you certainly have to become good at both, in my opinion. All right, sure, you could focus on just one and, and hope that that's gonna be the case, but we all know that if you can't submit somebody, it goes to points. So it'd be silly to completely neglect the other strategy. So I do a little bit of both. You know, I try to make it, uh, to create a game which both facilitates scoring points as well as submitting people, and uh, I think I did that really well this tournament so far. All right, man, before I let you go, last question. Uh, if and when you win tomorrow, yes, sir. Uh, what is that going to mean for you at this level of your career? Man, uh, winning ADCC has always been a dream of mine. You know, uh, for any, I think anybody that competes with, in submission grappling to any degree, if they said that ADCC wasn't, a, you know, something that, that was on their, you know, checklist of, of accomplishments, uh, I think it would be, they would be crazy. I, I don't know why they wouldn't, you know, seek that out because it's clearly one of the most prestigious things uh, that a submission grappler could win. Um, so it means the world to me. It really does. You know, even though I've moved on to mixed martial arts and that's really my main thing now, comparative to uh, to grappling, um, you know, I think they released a statement flow misquoted me uh, once by saying like, oh yeah, you know, I did everything I wanted to do in the world of jiu-jitsu, now I'm moving on to MMA. I think they just kind of like, they were trying to create an article where like, ah, he might say that. And I'm like, I'm like, I was so mad because like, you know, those quotes, like people post them and then that's forever, right? Like people like, I don't want anybody to believe that I did everything I wanted to do in jiu-jitsu. Screw that. There's so much more to do in jiu-jitsu. Like, unless I beat like every dominant person in the sport ever, then maybe you could argue like there's nothing left to do, but like I certainly haven't done that. So, you know, uh, it still means the world to me even though I'm doing mixed martial arts, man. So let's talk a little bit about that MMA career of yours. Uh, for you, what's the main goal in, in, inside the MMA world? Uh, honestly, uh, I want to put submission grappling back on the mixed martial arts map. Um, I think that there are a few different guys that have been semi-successful using grappling in, not semi-successful, very successful, uh, using grappling in mixed martial arts, but not as much to uh, submit people. 
Uh, and I want to be a guy that, you know, can go in there with the absolute best in the world and, uh, you know, in the first round or second round, just pull off a, a submission victory against anybody in the world. I think I'm capable of doing that. Now it's just a matter of developing all the other skills to make sure that when I walk out there in front of the other guy, he doesn't knock me unconscious before I get the chance, right? So that's my goal. You know, I'm going to become one of the greatest mixed martial artists of all time, but I'm going to be known as a finisher, not, not just with submissions, but also with KOs and TKOs. And I, I'm going to be known as the guy that, oh man, this is going to be, there's going to be fireworks for this one, you know? Uh, well, I think one thing you've uh, been synonymous with your whole career is bringing fireworks. So I don't think we're going to see anything different inside the uh, cage. So uh, dream matchup for you at this moment in your career. If you could have one fight, whether it's a year from now, three years from now, who's the guy you want the most? Grappling or mixed martial arts? Mixed martial arts. Mixed martial arts. So right, right now at this point in my career, um, one of the biggest fights I'm looking forward to. Of course, I'm looking forward to winning uh, the championship in my division, which would be against Martin Wynn currently uh, at 155 pounds. Uh, however, I would say that even more looking forward to that, uh, that farther than that, I would like to beat Shinya Aoki, whether it is for the whether it's for the title or whether it's just a super fight situation. He fights at 70. Uh, we've had a grappling match before. I'm really impressed with what he does in mixed martial arts with grappling. And I just think that it would be a, a, another just really exciting fight that a lot of people would have to question like, hey, you know, is this guy's level of experience in grappling and mixed martial arts going to be able to take out somebody like Gary Tonin, who's young, up and coming, submitting a ton of people and doing really successful at mixed martial arts. I think there's a huge story there. Uh, so that's one of the ones that I look really forward to uh, in the future because he obviously is at one. All right, last one, Gary. Uh, tomorrow, JT Torres, if you have it your way, what submission are you finishing him with? Rear naked choke. Uh, I'm going to get to his back. Uh, I think that the most conducive strategy to mixing points with submissions is finding ways to get to people's back and submitting them. So that's what I think is most likely. If I'm going to submit the guy, it's going to be from his back. All right, man, before we let you go, uh, microphone's yours. Anybody you want to give a shout out to? Anything you want to say to the competition? Uh, absolutely. You know, uh, Future Kimono is sponsoring me for this event, so big thanks to them. You know, my main gear sponsor for this event. Uh, also, uh, Cash Chicks Championships, of course, my own apparel line, as well as Chimera Coffee, uh, Studio 540. All right, uh, all these guys have been helping me out so much. You know, I really appreciate it. As also, Ouch Medical, uh, this guy Kareem uh, and his, his crew have been taking care of us uh, from the medical side of things for quite a while. You know, especially a lot of guys don't have insurance. Thankfully, I'm lucky enough to have it. Uh, you know, and he's been taking care of us quite a bit. And we always get the utmost care from those guys. So really appreciate uh, their support as well. Anton Skoro, Five Grappling, The Slippery Salmon. <laughs>